Capitola, come to the coast with me. The sun and the sky are free. We'll play in the sand and sea. Capitola, paradise you'll adore. I'll take your hand there on the sand along the shore. We are here with Jan Wilson, who worked at the Capitola Theater back in the 1950s. She's going to share some memories of that and some other things around Capitola and Aptos. Jan, thank you so much for being part of the Capitola Memories Project. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be fun. Well, I sure hope so. Uh, please tell us about your uh, family history, early family history. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Modesto. Um, didn't ever live there, but that was where my maternal grandmother was, so I presume my mom picked that to go have her child, or our, their, my dad and mom's child. Anyway, after that, um, since they had been in Yosemite, uh, he, my dad was with Shell Oil Company up there, and when they got married, a regular job uh, was in Bakersfield. And so he was moved to Bakersfield for a small time. I don't know, know how much. And then um, over the time, and I'm not sure of the logistics, is uh, he was drafted in the Navy, or he joined the Navy, and uh, did his training in San Diego. And mom, at that point, had uh, two children. And when he um, finished his training, he was stationed at, I think they called it Park um, Air Force Base, although it was a Navy hospital there. And he was a surgical tech. And that is the time when I got polio. So mm. after my isolation in, um, up in Oakland, they brought me back to the hospital there. So it was a pretty scary time. But when, he, when the war was over and he was released from there, they moved back to where he was born and raised in Fresno. And we lived there for four or five years before we came over here. And the, uh, I guess the motivation was the year before we moved over here. It was 113 in Fresno. <laughs> so um, after two years of taking a house here in Seabright, they decided to move, and they moved into Aptos. So that's pretty much where I spent most of my uh, or a lot of my memory years. I went to seventh and eighth grades at Aptos High School, or Aptos Graduate School, pardon me, and uh, then Watsonville for high school. Mm -hmm. By that time, I had two uh, brothers and a sister. Now, so what year was that that you moved to here in Santa think Cruz we moved County? I here in 1950, I think it was. 1950 would have been about the right timing. Mm -hmm. And um, good times, not a whole lot of money. Dad worked uh, first for Cheney Ford, and I think it was Cheney in, in uh, Santa Cruz. Um, and Mom stayed at home. And uh, anyway, we just uh, had a good time. Aptos was way prettier than it is right now. It's just making my heart hurt. <laughs> Where in Aptos did you live? Uh, we lived um, up on. Um, uh, it wasn't Cathedral. It was, Cathedral was one of the streets, and then we lived downtown in Aptos at one point, too. And then after my dad passed away, Mom bought the first lot from Ledyard Company. The Ledyards owned all of that south on uh, Soquel Drive. And uh, by then, we had one more sister, so there were five of us. <clears throat> when did you first uh, see Capitola? Well, I think that my dad probably took us all to see the Wax Museum, for one thing. I wasn't working, and this was early on when they kind of first opened it. It was pretty new, anyway. And, but it wasn't something that we traveled around a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I even went to Santa Cruz until I was probably maybe 14. It just wasn't, people didn't run back and forth. Everything was in Aptos that we needed. And um, when I was 14, of course, we were going to Washingtonville High School by that time. So, Your life kind of was the other direction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know whether you want a little story about how I got to Capitola, but that's primarily what happened uh, is my dad got me a job with Audrey Jacobs. And at that point, it was because of uh, another job that I had that he didn't think was appropriate. <laughs> Do you want me to go into that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you may want to avoid it, I don't know. 
Um, I had been working when I was 13 for a lady who had a beauty shop down south of Aptos on the old road. In fact, that was the road you go back and forth. And uh, she had me work on Saturdays cleaning the shop. And then she, one day she says, I have an extra pedicure coming in. If I teach you ahead of time, would you like to do that pedicure? I'm just a kid. So sure, I'd do anything. So, and then I cleaned house for her, or cleaned the shop for her. And so she taught me to do um, nails and, and peep in pedicures. And we had this one lady come in that she was a regular customer. She's a big, tall lady with red hair. And she wore light blue dungarees and a mink coat. And she had copper colored orange hair. And she came in one day and she says, does anybody know how to do pin curls? I love pin curls. Well, you're probably too young for this, but pin curls were what I used to do for my grandma. And she, you know, so I said, oh, I do, I do. And so she let me do her pin curls and she was happy. And then the next weekend she came in, or the next Saturday she came in and she says, would you like to come down and clean my, my restaurant, my, my living space in my restaurant? And I said, oh, sure, you know, it's good money. And she said, well, I'll pay you such and such an hour, which was really good, by the way and a steak dinner, which was really good, by the way. <laughs> so I went down there and I, I called home and, and I said, um, I'm working an extra job. I should be through by about 6.30 or so. And I said, will you come get me, Dad? Because I wasn't driving. And uh, he said, sure, just let me know when you're ready. And I, I did, I cleaned her place. And I'm a little bit shocked about her bedroom because it happened to have a very soft pink satin bedspread and mirrors on the ceilings and that kind of thing. So that was questionable to me a little bit, but not beyond what, I mean, I wasn't stupid. So then I called my dad and I said, come get me. I'm ready to come home. I'm having dinner and I'll be through. So he said, where are you? And I said, well, I'm at this restaurant called Dixie's down at Rob Roy Junction, which is now Freedom Boulevard, this mm -hmm. connection. And uh, there was utter quiet. And he says, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. So he came right down and he took Dixie aside and said it wasn't appropriate for his daughter, 13, 14 years old, to work in a prostitution situation. <laughs> so he took me home. And on the way home, he explained more what I, why I shouldn't be there. And then he says, I think I can find a job for you. And then he approached Audrey Jacobson at the theater. And from the time on, I worked until I was through college. And I worked for her a long time. So that's a bit of the story about that. So I actually, I worked a lot of the time at different places. I worked for Mr. Northway, who is the Santa Cruz. He, he, my husband went to school with his kids. And, uh, and uh, I did uh, soda jerk, sandwich making, you know, and that sort of thing. So always had a little job. And, but Audrey is the one at the Capitola Theater. That is the most most memories for me. And that's where I got to be in Capitola, which is basically a long answer to your question. That was about uh, 1954, was mm -hmm. it, when you started mm -hmm. at the theater? Yeah. Now, I've always, I always thought uh, her name was uh, Jacobs. Well, I did too. And then somebody said the other day, oh, Jacobs. I said, you know, I didn't know her as Jacobs, Jacobson. Mm -hmm. Her mom and dad uh, and she and her uncle, uh, Mr. Mayor, from San Francisco, he had a he was a, um, a theater manager for I believe the current theater, um, and he would come down occasionally. But her folks and she ran the rest of the um, um, theater there. Her mom was in the box office. Um, she would do the counter, the food counter, and uh, her dad would take tickets. In the days that they needed to be uh, gone for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> Then there was a man from Soquel, it was called, I believe, the Osakalis Theater at that time. I think their name was Dickinson. I could be wrong with that, but I think it was Dickens or Dickinson. Anyway, he, the young one, the young man, and Audrey were partners in the Osakalis Theater. And then his father would come over and fill in at Capitola Theater when they were either short of help or they needed somebody to oversee us girls and that kind of thing. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I knew her as Audrey Jacobs, but some this person I thought, gosh, maybe I, all these years I've called her something different. So, but I knew her as Jacobs and her, the family. What were your uh, jobs at the theater? 
When I first started, I was just an, what they called an usherette. They're <laughs> non existent anymore. Um, but we just, I, I, you know, I came in early and I would wipe down if it needed to be wiped down. I would do, um, you know, anything she needed. But usually there was a specific time we showed up for work. I was never late, didn't ever push that. She was, um, she kind of scared people in a way. Uh, she very strict like and her parents were kind of that way too um, but I never had a problem with her I just did what she said you know um, but I was actually the usherette um, keep the smokers out of the wrong section keep the kids quiet that kind of thing <laughs> did you ever um, banish anybody to the crying room or uh... actually I would ask if they had a child and very oh, often okay. just automatically do that mm -hmm. And that was right next to the projectionist upstairs. There was a little set of stairs. But there, there, I didn't ever have a problem with getting people to take their children upstairs. Mm -hmm. People are not aggressive back then as they are now. A little bit more forward people are now. So. Well, she probably had to be uh, strict if she had a bunch of teenagers working for her. Well, I was, I don't know who worked ahead of me there mm -hmm. because I, think that I was I was there and I don't remember having somebody there until shortly afterwards and there um, she was this gal was named Ronalee Finley and she was a Capitola girl and she her mom and dad I guess too you know where the um, I guess it's a B and B where the train depot was up up at the hill across yes. the tracks there was mm -hmm. a little hotel or motel situation or room type situation that her folks ran. Mm -hmm. And before we were through working at the theater, she and I both worked together for a lot of years, or I mean four or five years. And uh, they either bought or had a house built on Burlingame, just, just down the street from Gale's um, Bakery. So um, she was there with me uh, a couple of years, probably three years later, my sister was hired, my younger sister was hired to work there. Um, we overlapped some of the time there were girls. As things moved on, I did do counter work. When I think I turned 16, maybe it was a monetary thing. I felt, she felt like I was trusting, trust, trustworthy, whatever. But I worked the counter there. And then in later years, after her folks, um, they didn't come down as often, I don't think. And uh, her mom didn't want to do the box office, or if she did, then I would just fill in elsewhere. But I also did the box office, especially in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Her mom would be more, her mom and dad would be there more in the summertime and, and doing the work around there. And then eventually they didn't anymore. How did you get to work? First off, my dad would take me. And then when I turned 16, my grandma had been teaching me how to drive for almost two years <laughs> in her little coupe. And then, um, so when I turned 16 and got my license, I drove myself. I used her car, my grandma's car and drove. First night there I had my car, I had told my dad, he, I said, can I stay and watch a movie? And he says, sure, sure. Uh, but make sure you come right home. And I said, oh, sure. And then towards the end, because we already kind of had a little plan going, and this Ronald Lee that I was talking about was going to be at the bowling alley downtown in Santa Cruz. This is the first night I drove a car. So when it was over, I called home and I said, hey, I want to stay, stay and watch the movie. And he says, okay, but make sure you come home right afterwards. He was very <laughs> explicit. So I got in the car and I drove to Santa Cruz the first time I drove that car downtown. And she was meeting me at the bowling alley, and I came along Pacific Avenue, and there was somebody had thrown a, a flash bomb or a, one of the little popping bombs in the bowling alley, and there was police cars lined up along the street, or a police car, I guess it was. And I was so busy watching for her that I sideswiped the police car. Oh. And I sat there and cried and cried and cried and cried. And finally, the kids kept saying, all the young people out there, go, oh, we're not going to tell anybody. We're not going to tell anybody. Just go. And I, my daddy says, I can't ever leave the site of an accident. <laughs> so I didn't. I sat there. And finally, the policeman came out. And he says, calm down. Calm down. It's OK. He said, what happened? I said, I was watching for somebody, and I wasn't watching your car. And he says, it's OK. If anybody asks me about the scrapes on my car, I will have to come see you 
if you give me your address, in which I did, and he never came. So I made off like a bandit, but I was learned a lesson that was part of me all my life. <laughs> what was Capitola like in the 1950s? How was it different from today? I feel like it was really different. Um, it was, of course, quieter. It was nowhere near as commercial as it is now. It, they had very little there, and um, at least from my standpoint. Um, you know, we had the patio next door the, where we could get a sandwich when we needed it. We didn't really do much. We did go to the beach. If it were a Saturday or Sunday when I had a working matinee, or not working matinee and was going to work in the evening, I would take my clothes down and just change, get off the beach and wash up and change at the theater and then put on a dress, and, which was pretty much what we did. We didn't dress in, you know, we didn't dress like people do now. And, um, and I don't know that she required it, but she always wore a dress. She never wore slacks. I don't think I ever saw her in her meeting Audrey. So, uh, but the change in it is, is the mercantile, the um, commercialization that is there now. However, I'll qualify it. I came off the big hill coming down into it the other day, probably the day that I came by to see you. And I thought, you know what? They have kept this little town beautiful. They have, it looked to me like somebody had gotten a hold of everybody by the shirt sleeves and said, okay, everybody paints their buildings this day, you know, this summer. It was beautiful. And it's, I can just absolutely see why it's a draw for people. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a lot more restaurants. I don't think they had, I think the patio was there. I can't think what was over around the Esplanade. Not a whole lot. Bowling Alley was there. Maybe that was the, uh, the Edgewater, was that there? Yes, that was there. Mm -hmm. The Wax Museum was there, which we would get into every once in a while. Not very much because we didn't have a whole lot of money. I don't remember, you had one question you asked about the ballroom, and I don't remember the ballroom per se. Mm -hmm. so well, it was it adjacent to there. the Sabaw. Ah, uh, okay. What well, mm -hmm. was, okay. Anyway, uh, um, the only thing that I remember as I grew older and we were working a full, a, more of a full day, especially during the summertime, is that we would get our dinner at the patio. They made a really nice steak sandwich. Is that, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I see a lot of difference. It was calmer, it was quieter. Um, the, where Gales is now. That was my cousin's, my father's cousin, I should say, his laundromat. And prior to that, I think it was a gas station maybe. I don't even, I was too young for that. Were there still some uh, farms in the area? Orchards and <sighs> things like that? I don't, I don't think so. Probably weren't paying too much attention no, to No, probably uh, weren't. I know that my friend in Aptos, my friend's brother, used to take us to Santa Cruz around the back way. I never really, there was, well, in fact, there was no freeway. We used to run across the highway there to go to the beach, you know, right where the sticky wicket was. We used to just run across. There was no cars mm -hmm. to speak of. It was probably a whole lot less than what the highway or the, you know, Freedom Boulevard, or not Freedom, but uh, Soquel Avenue was a whole lot less than that. <clears throat> but anyway, so, uh, but, you know, to go to, we, for the most part, we drove or were driven to Capitola. A couple of times they tried to get me on the train tracks and the rest of them went on that way and ran that way to Soquel to so and Capitola or whatever, but uh, I just didn't think it was safe. I didn't, I had polio when I was a kid and I don't have a lot of strength in one leg and so I was very, didn't ever run really fast if you had to get in trouble with a train coming or something. All I could visualize is getting caught out of there and one of the trestles <laughs> being done in. Wouldn't want that. Um, yeah. You know, so. It's a little bit quieter. Now in the winter time, I guess in the 50s, it must have been really slow. It was it? very slow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I, you even have very many theater goers or? Uh, no, but you know what? She was faithfully open. I think she was open seven days a week. I really do when I think about it, which is not what they, you know, would think about doing now. But um, yeah, uh, as, as I grew older um, and was in the box office, it was quiet enough that I could get all my homework done, and then if I had a problem, she was a very educated lady. I, I believe she went to, I want to say Stanford, 
I think she was a graduate of Stanford, but I also think she was a teacher, if I remember correctly. And I'd hand her my English papers and say, can you give me some advice on this? And she'd, we'd sit down and we had enough time to actually converse and have a, you know, a relationship where she was a talk one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody thought she was pretty ornery, but she was not at all. It was just a look that she had. She was a very serious lady. Mm -hmm. Never married. Lived, as far as I know, in the Venetian forever. I think that's what they called it, all the pretty colored buildings. Yeah, the buildings. Venetian yeah. court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and her mom, mom and dad stayed with her on the weekends when they were down. What were some of the movies you remember seeing at that time? Well, I remember the, the first one was I'll Cry Tomorrow, I think. I may have been one before that, but I was intrigued with Susan Hayward at the time, too. So before that was through with its run, so to speak, I maybe it was a week, two weeks, I don't know, I could actually pre-verbalize the lines from the, from the movie. So that was, you know, I left there thinking, God, I could do that movie all by myself. But, um, so that and, um, oh, any musical, I mean, um, gosh, Brigadoon, um, any of the musicals that were made back then, there, there was a lot, that, that was a big thing in movies at that time. They weren't as serious or dirty or nasty or mean or whatever as much as they are now. Um, but, um, oh, a, well, A Summer Place was made, and we saw that there. And several Brando's mu movies were in that were big. Um, now, you were telling me earlier you got to see a... Uh, some movies being filmed, correct? Well, yeah, the one, the, the uh, one-eyed Jacks with um, Brando, uh, Mr. Cunningham, was our projectionist, and then they uh, apparently their union required that the electricians, local electricians, were by the union were hired for any movie set around. So I was on the summer. Um, uh, the Brando won the one eye Jacks and a summer place with Sandra D and uh, Richard Egan, Dorothy McGuire. It was a great time for a kid who was crazy about that was actually my major in school with drama and English and, and um, you know, theater. Mm -hmm. So uh, and art. And so I was you know, it was a real thrill. And we got to actually interact, which was very big for a you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen year old kid. So it, w it was a very, very fun time. And Where were those movies filmed? They were filmed at, um, really on um, all of them, on um, 17 Mile Drive. They actually built part of the set for a summer place there. I have a photograph in my album of uh, D Delmar Davis sitting out on this big boom out of, kind of over the ocean on a boat docking area which I don't believe was there because I've been to, you know, 17 mile drive a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was fun. But the actors were fun. We all sat around having lunch together. And um, the only thing I didn't get was a photograph of <laughs> Marlon Brando, which was big on my plate at that time. But I did, you know, Carl Malden and Slim Pickens and all the old cowboys that were in movies at that time. It was very much fun. So back in the 50s, uh, what, do you remember the cost of a movie ticket? You know, I, when I saw your list, I thought, oh my gosh, Some, something tells me 85 cents. It might have been 50 for kids. I don't know. It wasn't very much in today's standards, for sure. No. Uh, and then I want to say a dollar twenty-five for something. I don't have a good recollection of that. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Tell us about the, the Saba and the Wax Museum. What sort of things did they have at the museum? You know, I just remember going in and halfway being frightened. I, and I think my dad took me at one time. Something connected with that. He also, when people would come over, and I think it was Santa Cruz, though, not that mu wax museum, is the um, uh, supper. Uh, uh, the, la the Last Supper? The Last Supper at uh, downtown. In fact, I think the place is still there. Yeah, they that had was that. at the uh, Art League Gallery on Broadway. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that that's where it was until they it took it out. It was moved uh, not too long ago. It's now over at the Santa Cruz Memorial Park at the oh, end of uh, Ocean okay. Street. Yeah, he, when we had company, that was another thing. Um, that Well, he got into his what I call religious mode <laughs> at some point in the 50s. And he, when he left Al Cheney Ford, 
he was selling the great big hotel Bible. It was a big Bible about that big and about that thick. He was selling it all up and down the Salinas Valley to, mm. you know, and it was primarily made for Catholics. And so he would take our family and friends when they came over, you know, from Fresno or the Modesto or wherever, and make sure that they saw that. But the one in Capitola, I, I have visions of being there. I can't remember what I saw. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't, and I might have been because of a bit of fright. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I've, the museum has a collection of uh, postcards, oh. and so it looks like there were uh, wax figures of uh, celebrities of the day, That's primarily and char characters from history, and a variety of different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. It wasn't some place we went a lot of the time. Well, it was only there about a year. Yeah, <laughs> and then, they, they uh, didn't have it there after it burned down in '57, did they? Tell us about that uh, fire. Were you uh, there when it burned down? You know, so, somehow or other, I think it was at nighttime. I don't think it was daytime. I it think, was nighttime, I yes. I think that we might have been moved out of the theater complex just on a short term because I don't think it affected that in any way, but there mm -hmm. was a certain uh, care that needed to be taken care of. I don't remember exactly, but it, that's kind of what my feeling is. Mm -hmm. But I know that we were sad because it was gone, because people in the summertime, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now the patio restaurant also got it, burned, Yeah, right? and that was right next door to the theater, which is maybe more like how we got moved out a little bit, I don't mm -hmm. know. And it may, I don't remember it being a very long time, mm -hmm. meaning not days, I mean just within a short period of time and hours or whatever. I, I just don't remember it being Well, it's way. fortunate the fire didn't reach the theater. Well, I always thought it was a, I thought it was a Quonset hut, so I wasn't particularly worried. But I, you know, it didn't really. People took care of people, so I mean, it, it, it was handled well. It was sad. I remember being sad for uh, whoever had it. The patio, um, I don't think it was damaged too much, as I remember. Maybe it was, but. Yeah, I've seen pictures where it, it was pretty, yeah. it had a lot of damage too, as near well, as I could tell. It was also a cocktail lounge, if I remember correctly, so no. it wasn't something, as younger kids we went into, I do remember after um, I was driving maybe, when, we, when I could work a full weekend day, meaning Saturday full day, Sunday full day, um, so I'd take either um, if we needed a food break, we would order uh, a steak sandwich from there. It was a really good sandwich, and that was our dinner. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure if somebody went and got it for us, or whether we could they have it ready and would you know hand it. But uh, yeah, we used it. I ate there, but not ate there. Did you work uh, continue to work at the theater after you started to college? Yes. I worked there. I didn't finish. I was the year and three quarters. I was about two months out of graduating from Hartnell. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to get to San Francisco. I mean, it was hell bent. Had been for a long time. I was going to do it right after high school. And a bunch of friends that all hung out together that were going to be going to San Francisco when they got their degree were going to work all live together, which we did. But I moved earlier, so I worked until probably March of my second year at Hartnell, and I just said I'm done at home. Uh, was, you know, I was ready to move on. So I worked at the theater until I was ready to leave. What did you do in San Francisco? I was a um, uh, I was on a switchboard for an insurance adjusting company that I just was an information person, and then I went on kept in the insurance line. Worked at uh, Merchants Exchange for a while, and I worked at one of the insurance companies, and I did some preliminary policy writing, that kind of thing. Not just the copy part, not the other. But, um, yeah. Uh, I loved my job at the theater. We had such a good time, really did. And they, they were really good to us. In fact, my senior year of high school, Mr. Mayer was a manager of the Curran Theater, I think. It was either the Geary or the Curran. But anyway, um, he came down the day of my graduation, and I didn't go into work that night. And they said, come over on your way to San Francisco, because we were going to go to San Francisco. Oh, it's the next day, I'm sorry. I was going to San Francisco for Saturday after my graduation day. And my friend and I were going to shop and 
you know, sees the movies and stuff like that. And he said, please stop by the theater, we have something for you. And he had um, brought me down Mary Martin's seats from the th at the theater for that Saturday of South Pacific. So I got to see Mary Martin and uh, George Otasi, I think was his name, was the male lead. So that was like, I just thought they were great to me. Oh, that's nice. They, yeah. They let me do whatever I really wanted to do as long as it was in their mental policy of being okay. They let me do holidays in the theater. And the first time I ever did it was the first year I went to work there. Christmas came along and <laughs> I'm backtracking a little bit here. Uh, Christmas came along and I said, you know, I make all my own ornaments. I can do all this. Can I put up a Christmas tree? If you, are you going to put up a Christmas tree? And she says, oh, no, no, we are going to be in Hawaii. And I, I said, can, can I put up a Christmas tree and decorate the, at the, you know, at the theater? And she says, sure. So it was many years later, I was in San Francisco, one of my roommates was Jewish, and I was telling her about um, them being Jewish. I had found out afterwards, and she said, and they let you put up a Christmas tree? And I said, yeah, they did. They let me do just about as long as it wasn't you know, something that was going to burn down the theater, they let me do it. Mm -hmm. And they were extremely, extremely nice to my sister as well and to Romilly. Yeah, all, all of us that worked there, they were very kind. When you went to Hart and Nell, uh, tell us how you got there and uh, what you uh, studied. For the most part they had a bus and then my grandma just really let me use her car. And we had um, three guys um, that were a year ahead of us at Hartnell. And they would meet us at Deer Park, pitch up my friend in Aptos. And we had this little coupe just packed with kids and I ended up driving. And it gave us some latitude because we had a pattern that was kind of set on Fridays. All of us that were really close friends, there was probably six of us that um, would get in the car on Friday and not have an afternoon class, kind of planned it that way. And we'd go over to the beach in Carmel. And we did that almost all the time on Friday uh, through there. So I drove, but we also, for the first time, we picked up, the bus came through from Santa Cruz and picked up anybody from Santa Cruz. And then, you know, um, after the fact, I ran into friends from there that I knew in college that I hadn't seen for years. So they're from Santa Cruz and they picked up anybody standing on the highway there from Aptos and Soquel and Capitola. They just stopped and picked up our kids. And so it was a full big bus load. And I think, I want to think that they didn't do just the highway. It seems to me they went down Freedom Boulevard and picked up youngsters along there or young people along there. It was a pretty full load, and mm -hmm. it was very much fun. We had a good time, and um, I had classes. I mean, I took math, I really wish I never did well in. Uh, I took, um, I did theater, I did, uh, had three painting classes, I think, English class. And I, I don't know what I filled in with over the two years. I do know we did a lot of stage work, and mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of my aim at that time, too. And so, yeah. But most of my friends were teachers. Teachers or bankers or anything that women did in those times. That was three. They always say there was three careers, an office worker, a teacher. What was the other one? Anyway, but <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of options for young women at that time, or they didn't know it. Well, you have a beautiful place up here in the Swanton area now. Uh, when did you uh, come here to Swanton? Um, let's see, Ben and I were married. We met in 1963 at a Parents Without Partners. of uh, the group in town that had that organization. And it was just one night they had a gathering and then he called me after that and he said, um, would you like to go out? And I said, sure. And so he met me at the Capitola um, bowling alley. That was our first date. And then it just went on from there. So we were married in 64. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And he at, he at that time had two children. And then I had one a fairly small child. And then we have one. Mm -hmm. So we have four children between us. And moved out here and it was 
pretty darn rural. <laughs> it's a good thing I was raised on a farm part of my life and as a kid in Fresno. But, so um, Fresno doesn't have redwood trees. <laughs> no, they don't have redwood trees, and it was hot. But this was pretty beautiful, and the only uh, this old house was pretty much half of what it is now. It was the original house that was built when his dad moved here in 1917 or 18, something like that. And he was not part of the family for a good many years. His, he has three older brothers that were already born before they moved here, so they had babies. And then they waited until, I think, 15 years between them. Mm. And it was a big surprise. <laughs> and the neighborhood, I've talked to the neighborhood sometimes, and they say, you know, <coughs> excuse me, uh, nobody knew Mom Wilson was pregnant until her husband handed out dual cigars. And Ben was one of, and his kids were born, and our youngest was born in the old Brent's Forty Hospital. They're all on, we're all on the plaque. Not me, but they, they are. And um, he and his twin brother are on there, and he's the only one that stayed here. He has, he had one brother that was um, um, kind of a carpenter, he was part of the rebuilding of Subic Bay. His second brother down was um, a graduate of Cal Poly before it was Cal Poly, and he actually taught there. He has an engineering degree, and he was an airline engineer for with Pan American for all his life. And then he had one brother pass away, and then the, his twin brother was part of uh, the whole space program. He was a manager of the space program in many factions. All over, both in L.A. and in Houston and that kind of thing, and then Ben stayed here. This is where he wanted to be, and he's done just fine. Very quiet person, didn't like to get out in the world. And Tell us about your career. Karen was about four. She'd started school, or five. She started school. And so I had some time to myself, so a friend down the road, and I decided to do a... Um, I always baked, I'll backtrack a little bit, I always baked, and I thought it would be really fun to learn how to make candy flowers or frosting flowers. So this class came up out on the east or west side here, and a friend of mine and I registered for it, and we learned to make roses and daffodils and violets, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and about that time, my youngest brother was going to get married for the second time, and we didn't have a whole lot of money. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm learning how to make candy flowers. How about if I make your wedding cake? Assuming that it was going to be a small wedding. When I got the guest list, there was 250 people on it. I ended up having to go over to San Jose, or Saratoga it was, and um, get equipment because I had, you know, family cake pans, you know, what can I say? So I ended up getting a great big 18-incher and a 14-inch and a 10 and a 6, and I made this gigantic cake for 250 people and covered it with frosting daisies, and it was really pretty, all lemon curd inside, and I did this because of just recipes the family had used. And um, so got to this wedding, and I had the book, the Wilton book, and it gave directions in it that you could be followed well, or it could be followed well, however, if your cake isn't level and you put your supports in and that isn't level, then the whole cake begins to list to one side. So I got a little panicky and told the bride she's going to have to cut her cake, and she did. And I walked away from that wedding with three orders for the wedding cakes, which was huge. I mean, I went panicked because what had to happen is I had a 14-inch sto uh, stove here, and that didn't bake any of the cake. I finally had to get a hold of a friend who was on the Felton Firehouse, who was a um, fireman, and say, can I use their stove over there? So he put me up for a couple of days while I baked that cake over there, and I brought it home and decorated it. And it was something, I mean, it was a home-baked recipe, and it was something people hadn't eaten before, because at that time, there was Maddox in, in Soquel. There was, maybe, there was maybe two downtown. There was one at the point where the plaza bakery yeah plaza and there might have been one on walnut street a bakery all of it was pretty standard white wedding cake with crisco frosting kind of thing and i my recipe had cream cheese and all the stuff in it so i mean it was stuff that they hadn't even eaten so i came away with three orders and that just ballooned it absolutely went 
And for the next 40 years, I did weddings. And I incorporated, I did the wedding cakes, I did the flowers, took some floral classes, and then I ended up doing some catering with it. And it just kind of ballooned until I got really tired. But I put my family to work and all the neighbor girls. And I had a whole crew that would serve and clean up and do that and ran it as a regular full-on, full-service, you know, uh, wedding situation. And uh, actually started the first wedding show here in Santa Cruz, back way back when with uh, the gal that had, you remember the china uh, closet on, um, uh, what's the side street there? Uh, Smith's China. That's Water Street. More, yes, right around in there. Smith's yeah, China yeah. Shop. Yeah, she and I did the first wedding uh, shows here, and we had it out at uh, Deer Park, or not Deer Park, but the um, golf course out there in Aptos. We had the first three of my girls. Were Seascape, maybe? Seascape, yeah. I'm sorry, I mixed up the names there. Yeah, so we did that, and then finally we hired a person to do the organization, and we moved it to the Coconut Grove. Never, never, ever advertised. Mm -hmm. I never ran an advertisement. That show did every, I did three quarters of my work and referrals out of that wedding show every year. It was really great. I mean, I, I could put, I put enough money away to put my daughter through the University of Oregon without a sense uh, coming out of our personal stuff here. Wow, well, it sounds like you had quite a career. I did have a really good career. Well, thank you so much for sharing your memories and being part of the Capitola Memories Project. Oh, well, I took you a whole long, long way through the counties. <laughs> but thank you for coming. It was really, really fun. I enjoyed it. And I hope it works out for you. Capitola, come to the coast with me. The sun and the sky are free. We'll play in the sand and sea. Capitola, paradise you'll adore. I'll take your hand there on the sand along the shore. Capitola, over the bridge we'll go. We'll capture the sunset glow and wait for the creek to flow. Capitola, sway to the ocean's roar. Beside the strand we'll hear the band.